So I've been realizing my lighting has just, ugh. All right, in this episode, we're gonna take a look at the blob brush tool. Welcome back designers, my name is Mike Pickett. I am a graphic designer and vector artist who dabbled a little bit in web design. I actually ran a graphic and web design company for just about 10 years before closing it down back in 2017, going who knows where, off into a different realm. But I'm back, I'm helping in the industry now. I wanna teach you all of the things that I know about Adobe Illustrator, about Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, and all the other stuff that I can help you out with when it comes to being a freelance graphic designer. So with that being said, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this video. Give me a thumbs up if you find the content useful. We're looking at the blob brush tool tonight. Now, it's pretty easy to use. We're gonna use an old sketch of mine, an old vector outline of mine of a winged skull. You saw it on the thumbnail doohickey thing. We're actually gonna use that to fill in. It's not a hard tool to use. There's some basic settings to it. If you've got a Wacom tablet or any other tablet of any kind, you can use this with pressure. There's different settings that you can get into on it. So let's hop into Illustrator and I'll meet you guys back here after the tutorial. Here we are on Illustrator once again, and I went ahead and placed our winged skull on the artboard. Now, this one I'm keeping for myself. I'm not giving you guys access to it. Sorry, uh, it's one of my best sellers. I do a lot of stickers of this. I do a few t-shirts of this. So I gotta keep this one. All right, so to access our blob brush tool, we're going to go Shift B on our keyboard. You can also click and hold on your paintbrush tool if you see it in your toolbar, and then mouse down to blob brush tool. Now, if you don't see these tools, if you're using Creative Cloud, you're gonna see this little ellipse down here. Click on those three little dots and you can add whatever tools are missing from your toolbar. Just click and drag them over to where you want them and they'll stay in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit Z on my keyboard or Z depending on where you're from. So we can zoom in around this eye. I'm gonna go Shift B again to get my blob brush tool back. And I'm gonna change this to a nice little charcoal gray. And I'm just gonna start painting where I want my color. And that one's done. Let's go V on the keyboard so we can use our selection tool. I'm gonna click that shape. And you can see that's the one difference between this and the paintbrush. Well, not the, not the one difference, but it's one of the differences between the paintbrush and the blob brush tool. Your paintbrush, you can either go strokes or fills. With the blob brush, it's always a fill. So with this fill now, I'm gonna go ahead and send it to back. So I'm gonna go shift command and left square bracket. Get it in behind my stroke. And let's do our other eye now. So shift B again, and I'm gonna fill this one in real quick. Select it and send it to back as well. Okay, so we have our two colors now. We have our two eyeballs. Now what I wanna do next is fill in the skull. So I actually wanna fill this. I'm gonna grab a different color. I'm gonna go with a, like a pale gray. Shift B again. Let's bump this up just a little bit. So I'm holding down my right square bracket now get a little bit bigger paintbrush. I'm just gonna be careful around the edges here. At least paint up to my stroke, not past it. Stay within the lines. Learned that I think in kindergarten, grade one. I was never one to paint inside the lines. I was always that kid that had to go outside the lines because I just thought it looked cooler. It's probably why I don't stay within the lines anymore either. I'm trying. I might be able to get there. Should have picked a smaller brush. Okay, almost there. Bear with me. This is important. Almost filled. Okay, and we're filled. Now, if you notice, I painted over top of everything with this tool. So I'm going to go via my keyboard, get my selection tool. I've highlighted the fill in the skull. And here's a moment of truth. Shift, command, left square bracket and it falls in behind. So we've still got our charcoal gray. That's the nice thing about this. If you have it set up the way that I do, you can paint over everything and it just doesn't matter. Now here's the key to this though. If these are in the background, I can do other colors over top of this. So say that I wanna take this here. Oh, let me just back up there. I didn't mean to select that. Let's deselect. I'm gonna grab my third or fourth gray over. So sign up with kind of a shadow color. I'm gonna grab my blob brush tool again. 
And I'm going to come in here and just knock this down a little bit. Okay, and I want to paint kind of right in here. And I'm going to come down here and do the same thing right in here. And let's do another one right in here. So I'm over top of everything. And then I can take those. I'm going to select all of these. Shift, Command, left square bracket. And it's sent to back. So now I've got a nice little shadow in here. And I can clean these up. I mean, I can work with different brushes and stuff. And I'll show you that in a second. But if I wanted to add to this, well, if I try to do it now, I'm going to go ahead and grab my blob brush again. I'm going to try to add to that one. So I need more shadowing in here, right? I want something that's kind of coming up on the side of the skull. Well, I've got two separate shapes now, so I'd have to go to my Pathfinder and merge those. But, here's the key. If I know this is what I want to merge with, I can Shift Command and right square bracket is going to pull it back to the front. And then if I, even if I click off and grab my blob brush again, I still got the same color, this is important, and come up here and just fill this in. Now I've got one shape. Now here's the thing, it has to be right at the very front. So it, again, you can't, you can't have it three layers back. Even though it's still visible, it won't merge those two together. And there's no special setting for this, right? Because our other settings here are keep selected and merge only with selection. So we'll talk about those in a second. But that should give you an idea of kind of how this works. If I need to add something, pull that piece to the front, shift, command, right bracket, then start doing your painting again. So we, we got a good start on this. It's, it's looking good. It's fleshing itself out. Let's look at what we can do with different brushes. So I'm going to double click on my brush tool, which brings up my brush tool options. Now if you look, we've got Fidelity. So again, this is just like our brush tool. If you haven't seen that one yet, I'm going to go ahead and link to it up in the top. Fidelity, and it's actually like our smooth tool as well. We looked at that one, I think it was yesterday. But if I go accurate, let's see what happens. So I've got it on accurate now. So I'm going to go ahead and draw, right? Pretty much sticks to what I drew. Let's back up. Let's go back in here and I'm going to go smooth. So let's do the same type of thing. And you see how it kind of smoothed it out for me? It didn't keep that sort of, you know, crooked angle that I had in the middle of that Z there, or Z. You know what? I've had to swap back and forth on Z and Z so much, I don't even remember which one's Canadian anymore. So let's look at a couple of other options here. So now if I want to change, now again with the smoothing, I normally like to keep mine kind of centered, possibly a little bit further. I never go accurate because I suck with a mouse that bad and my tablet has so much dust on it right now that I don't even want to tell you. So let's talk about the default brush options. So what's going to happen here is whatever I set is what the blob brush is going to use. Uh, right now we're at 28 point zero angle and my roundness is fixed. To be see here, we've also got pressure, random, stylus wheel, tilt, bearing. So there's a whole bunch of different settings you can do here. And there's stuff in here for your Wacom tablets or whatever other type of tablet you have. All I'm worried about here right now for this tutorial is things like the angle. So let's say a 36 degree angle. I'm gonna knock my roundness down to, uh, let's go a little more, let's say 60. And I'm gonna hit okay. So if you see, that gives me kind of an angled brush now, and I can come in, and the nice thing about this, let's uh, grab a nice little blue highlight, and I'm gonna knock my opacity down to like 50, and that's good. We're gonna come in, and I'm just gonna do this. Now if you see, it takes on the opacity. So just like your paintbrush tool, right, you can actually work with different colors, you can do different types of fills. Now. I know I'm kind of filling in here, and this can be used for just paint brushing. Um, so if you wanted to do stuff that doesn't have like an outline or anything like that, you can always come in and just use this as a paintbrush, all right, to create whatever you want. You can bump up the size on this using your left and right brackets again. I wanted something kind of, I don't know, um, logo-ish for something abstract logo. It, it'll all work. So the last things we're going to look at real quick is just those other two options. So keep selected and merge only with selection. So I'm going to go ahead and, and highlight both of those and we're just going to draw a line here. So if you see when I draw the line it now keeps that last line selected. And if I do another one down here and then we do another one here, 
it's not going to merge with this one. Even though we're on the same level, same colors, remember before when we did the gray, it, it's not going to matter here. So if I just command click out here, I've now got those two. I'm going to click over here and if you see, it still didn't merge with those ones because nothing was selected. So if I take that off, merge only was selected, and we do the same thing, I'm going to just command click and we go there. Now it's actually picked that one up. A robot coffee mug. So I hope you picked up a few things. That's the blob brush tool. Like I said, it's not hard to use. Get out there and practice with it. The point of these exercises, the point of these videos is to show you the basic functionality of it, show you where to get to your settings in the hopes that you're gonna go out and actually start to use these tools. I know it's not for everybody. It's not gonna come into play on every single project, but if you don't know about something, it makes it that much more difficult to start using it. So go back and binge watch now. There's a link somewhere above my head. I still don't know if it's left or right, but it's a, it, it's a rink. It's a rink outside tonight, I'll tell you that much. It's a link to the rest of the tutorials in this series. And I'm hoping you're gonna find value in everything that I'm saying. Well, I mean, not everything I'm saying because that rink thing was kind of dumb, but. All right, designers, I had to get back to work. We're on number 16. So we've got 14 more to go after this one. And then we're gonna move into some different content in the new year. I hope you stick around. I love having you guys here. We're almost at that 500 mark and I'm looking forward to possibly doing something to celebrate the 500. Okay, I had to get back to work, get out there and design something and I'll see you in the next video. That one good, I'm actually liking this. This might be the setup that I use just for all the intros for now. I'm in like a, an eight by eight, not even, I think it's like five by six space to do the shooting here. So I think I've done pretty well so far, but this looks a lot better. I can, I can see it right there, just, yeah. Okay.